is Bluetti's world first Pioneer NA sodium ion power station about to kill off lithium batteries? Let's find out. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So we are in autumn just now, but we are slowly but surely creeping into those winter months. And I know from experience just how cold it can get in this van without a diesel heater. Case in point, when I went to Loch Venneker for my Halloween episode and I was playing VR outside, that night was a gentle reminder of why I installed a diesel heater in Dobby and why it was a necessity. It gets that cold because again, the van is just a metal body and you can put all the insulation in that you want but it doesn't stop the cold creeping in to the point you can't even pick your phone up and use your phone because your fingers are that numb. And not only that, but the cold weather also affects electronics like your phone. It also messes with functions as well, like your screen or charging ports and stuff like that. And this not only applies to phones, it also applies to whatever power source you're using in your van, be it a lithium ion leisure battery, live pole 4 battery, power stations, all of them are affected. However, cold weather disruption for your electronics could be a thing of the past. Thanks to today's sponsor, Bluetti, with an exclusive world first look at their new Pioneer NA sodium ion power station. So when it comes to unboxing a Bluetti power station, I've learned over time they go for a very simplistic approach across all the power stations, which is just the power station warranty and manual, as well as a box of accessories. So let's see what we get with the Pioneer NA. We actually got a lot. So we've got the D7909 to 12 volt cigarette port, an MC4 to D7909. And we also get the standard UK plug socket. We do get the wee grounding screw so we can charge it from the house from the car and we can also charge it from solar and we can use this to charge it with the blue charger one as well so that's pretty nice they included all of these options so this is a world exclusive blue are the first to bring out a sodium ion power station so you might be wondering what the na stands for well if you look up here na on the periodic table stands for sodium and in layman's terms salt this power station runs on salt not lithium the massive main difference off the bat is lithium uses rare metals such as cobalt and lithium, whereas sodium is abundant, it's clean, and it's more sustainable. With all the new research that's been done, the sodium actually has a higher power density. It charges faster, it's a lower fire risk, better reliability, better efficiency, and overall, it's better for the planet. Sodium ion technology isn't brand new by any stretch of the imagination, but being in a packaged standalone power station version is. The technology's actually grown a lot faster from lithium ion to LIFEPO4. So that alone just shows how much time, research, and work is going into making this a more sustainable model to use. So let's have a closer look at it. You'll probably notice it's very familiar looking as well. This just basically looks like the AC180 and it also looks similar to the Blue 80 Elite 200 as well. But I'm digging the colour. That is a beautiful colour. So let's talk about a few of the features of the Pioneer NA. Width 9.5 inches, length 13 inches and height 13 inches, roughly matching up with the Blue 80 AC180 and the weight of it as well is coming in at 15.7 kilograms or just under 34.8 pounds. So the Blue 80 Pioneer NA comes with a 900 watt hour battery capacity with a pure sine wave inverter of 1500 watts that does power lift up to 2,250 watts. Now I know what you might be thinking straight away, Robert, 900 watts doesn't seem a lot, but I'm going to get into why the 900 watts is going to feel a lot more and why it's still going to outperform a lot of other lithium power stations. So moving on to charge cycles, if you remember when lithium ion came out, they would only go up to 500 charge cycles and then LifePo4 came out and charge cycles went up to 2,500, 3,000. This sodium ion is a brand new technology, but this has 4,000 charge cycles, which means you can use this daily, charge it, deplete it for 10 years. Brand new technology, and you've got 4,000 charge cycles, and the technology is only going to get better. So you can dual charge the Pioneer NA up to 1,900 watts from AC and solar. With the D7909 input, you can get up to a maximum 500 watt solar input. You can also charge it by the car with your 12 volt, 24 volts through the car cigarette lighter. The good thing is you can also charge this with the Blue Charger 1, and it also does have pass-through charging, so you can charge it and use it at the same time. So remember I said at the start, so the Mayon is more efficient. Here's the first one. You can fast charge this from 0 to 80% 
in 35 minutes. Every LivePo 4 battery I've ever had from Bluetti, anywhere else, are all roughly around about 45 minutes to an hour. This is 35 minutes. Now, if you didn't find that a bit impressive, this might impress you. So lithium ion batteries, LivePo 4 batteries, the minimum temperature to charge them is zero degrees. You can charge this at minus 15 degrees. You're not impressed by that either? Well, let me tell you the swan song of the Pioneer NA. You can use this down to minus 25 degrees. The sleeping bag that I've got in Dobby only goes down to minus two degrees maximum. And trust me, it's freezing. You can use this minus 25 degrees. That is insane. So like all the other Blue Betty power stations, you can connect it to the app. The only difference though, is this only accepts Bluetooth and not Wi-Fi. So let's move on to what ports you get. Four USB-A 15 watts. You get one USB-C 100 watts, two AC 1500 watt output sockets, one 12 volt 10 amp DC socket. And finally for charging it with solar and from the car and Blue Betty charger one, you get a 12 volt 10 amp DC 7909 connection. And with the LCD screen, I would say it very much mirrors the AC180. The same layout, your output, your input, your charge capacity, and your percentage. And at the bottom, you've got your AC button, along with your DC. And on the top, we do have a return of wireless charging, 15 watts. And on the side, you've got your AC input to charge it via the wall. You've got your circuit protector and your grounding point. And again, on the top, you've got these nice sturdy handles. Features wise, again, I would say it's literally identical to the AC180. Some safety features that Blue has installed in it is their BMS AI, which basically monitors real time voltage, current, temperature, over voltage, short circuit, reverse polarity, and also leakage detection. So all power stations across the board suffer from efficiency deficiency, and that's both on the AC and the DC. And what I mean by that is every single power station and every single ledger battery will never hit the capacity stated. So if you see a power station and it's rated for 1000 watt hours, chances are you're maybe going to get 900 watts, maybe 920. There's a lot of factors that come into it, but you'll never get the maximum capacity. So to put it in numbers for you, anything considered 85% and above is considered reasonable. Obviously, if it's below 85%, you're losing too much power. 90% efficiency is considered brilliant because you're only losing 10%. So there is a couple of YouTube channels out there that do deep dives and are more technically minded than myself that run all the tests just to see how proficient and how efficient this power station is. Now bearing in mind AC is one of the biggest energy deficiencies on a power station because as soon as you turn it on it's already taking power because it's the inverter kicking in. So again 85% is considered reasonable, 90% is considered amazing. The tests conducted on the Pioneer NA AC come in at 94.8% efficient so that's a usable capacity from 900 watt hours down to 854 watt hours. And when it comes to DC, anything above 80% is considered brilliant. DC came in at a massive 88.7% efficiency. And another win for efficiency, if you leave this on standby, so no DC and no AC switched on, the power draw this takes is a very low 1.5 watts. So it's not gonna drain the battery if you leave it on. And that's on its first iteration as a power station. Those numbers can still get better with more research and more learning of sodium ion. Blue Betty aren't messing about, they're making sure that this thing is just as competitive as any other power station on the market. When you see that, you're instantly going to know how to use it, but they've no played it safe with like a smaller power station. They've went as big as they could with a competitive price point. You have to take your hats off to them, first to act, first to market. So I've been sitting thinking, how do I test the Pioneer NA against another lithium battery? And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get the Elite 200 V2. I'm going to test it with the air fryer, same setting, same time. The only one that I can't try, which I will do later, is the diesel heater because I don't even have it hooked up. Again, I did have the AC180P, but I no longer have it anymore. That's when I wait to another home. So the next in line is the Elite 200, very similar looking and almost in height as well. The only difference in this one is it doesn't have wireless charging, whereas this one does. So I do have my air fryer out, but I just remembered it's a 1700 watt air fryer. The Pioneer NA is a 1500 watt power station. We'll get a bash and see what happens. 200 for 
I don't know, two minutes. And we're straight up at 16.44 on the Blue 88 Elite 200. And I've actually just thought about something as well. I could have took the air fryer with me when I'd done my Halloween special because it's going to heat the van up. <laughs> 1,615 watts on the Elite 200. Let's stop it there and we'll plug it in to the Pioneer. I haven't put power lifting on, so let's just see out the box if it can handle the air fryer or if it will throw a code up. So we're straight up at 17.30. So the fans are on for the Pioneer NA as well, but they aren't as loud as the air fryer. The Pioneer NA is handling my air fryer quite the thing, and this is a 1700 watt air fryer. I'm happy with that to move on. I don't think this is a sentence anybody's ever said. I've just ran my PlayStation 5 on a power station powered by salt. Straight away, it's high efficiency. I would say the second is the extreme cold weather usage at minus 25 degrees and charging at minus 15 degrees. The other pro is the fast charging on this from zero to 80% in 35 minutes. Another massive pro is the form factor, the fact that they've went with a recognisable look so you can just get up and running straight away. It's a brand new technology but it's still plug and play and I would say the last pro is it's pretty quiet. So what about the cons? I think the main one for me is the USB-A ports. I would have preferred USB-C. The other one is the D7909 port. Maybe there was a reason why they couldn't put the XT60 in it. Maybe that will come in the next iteration. This one isn't a con of mine, but I can see why some people might have a con with it, but no Wi-Fi. It's strictly just Bluetooth. Again, I don't care. And one con that I've left for the very last, it's the 900 watt hour capacity, but it is 94.8% efficient. This doesn't have lithium heaters to turn the batteries on to heat them up. And as I said, if you've got a 1500 watt hour power station, it's going to drain a lot faster than what this is. You're going to be charging it a lot more and you need to make sure that you're above zero degrees to make sure that you're getting a decent charge on it. Whereas this goes down to minus 15 degrees. So the waters for me, I wouldn't say is a full con because of how the efficiency balances it out. But I think I'm just being greedy and I'm being that way where if you've got power, you're always going I want more power. The Pioneer NA is a hands down must for anybody travelling in a van in the winter months. Anybody that lives off grid in colder climates, if you go ice fishing, working on job sites, and even if you just go camping for the weekend, and you might already be thinking, but I've already got a power station that's a thousand watt hours or two thousand watt hours. That's fine because this power station fits in with any setup, especially in the colder conditions. Again, your lithium batteries are going to drain quicker in colder climates due to the heaters coming on to keep them stable. All that extra power is going towards keeping your batteries warmer so you're not even getting the full use of the waters means you'll be charging your lithium batteries a lot more in the colder months and colder climates the way that i've got it in my head is you're not going to wear a summer's jacket in the winter you're not going to wear a winter's jacket in the summer it's just a no-brainer for winter so given how more efficient it is in the colder temperatures in the long run you'll have more usable power you'll charge it less and you can charge it faster than lithium so let's answer the question, is sodium ion killing off lithium? I think lithium is safe for now, but with how fast sodium ion technology is advancing, I do think sodium ion is going to take over LIFEPO4, just like LIFEPO4 took over lithium ion. But I will concede that lithium LIFEPO4 is going to be the better bang for the buck in terms of capacity, because it has been on the market for a while, it's a time to mature, and it's a time to get cheaper. If you remember, it wasn't that long ago where the way that power stations worked is one watt hour equaled one pound. This power station is the first sodium ion power station on the market from Luetti. You're getting 900 watt hours for 799 pounds. So even though this is brand new technology, Bluetti has kept the price point within reach and in the ballpark of where these power stations should be. Hats off to Bluetti for that one. They could have charged a lot more for it given the new technology that's in it. But again, once this technology starts getting implemented more and more, the capacity is going to go up and prices are going to start coming down again. But again, for the cost of entry at 799, especially if you're living colder climates or if you're traveling through the winter. 
So guys, if you want to go and pick up the Pioneer NA for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description. And if you use that link with my promo code Blue Eighty Robert, you'll get a nice wee five percent off it as well. So guys, if you did go and enjoy the episode, why not let me know in the comments? Let me know what you think of Sodium Ion. And if you haven't already, why not get subscribed and hit that bell notification so you're always notified when I drop a new video. So until the next one, guys, stay warm. Peace.